Welcome to LabMist.com in our lab video series on the IPv6 and Cisco router. You can find complete list IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will look at how we can transport IPv6 traffic across IPv4 network using a IPv4 compatible point-to-mount-to-point -to -point tunnel, and then we'll try to configure BGP across the tunnel using Route Reflector to automate route advertisement. Now for a lab topology, we have three routers, R1, R2, and R3, each with the IPv6 network configured on their loopback interfaces, loopback 1, 2, and 3. Here in the middle, we have an IPv4 network with the IGRP enabled to provide reachability between R1, 2, and 3 loopback 0 interfaces, which we will primarily use to source our tunnel interface. We also have a Wireshark machine taking packet captures at the R3 LAN interface, so we can later on analyze the encapsulated packet. So the goal of this lab is to provide reachability between these IPv6 network islands using the IPv4 compatible tunnel. So before we get started with configuration tasks, I just want to give you a bit of background on the IPv4 compatible tunnel. So unlike the 6 to 4 or 6RD tunnel that we have dealt with in the previous video that requires you to follow a certain format as far as the IPv6 address that you need to use to make the tunnel work, with the IPv4 compatible tunnel, there's no such requirement for the IPv6 subnet that you need to use, but instead there's a requirement on the IP next top that you need to follow a certain format, as you can see right here, with the colon, colon, and then followed by the IPv4 tunnel destination embedded as far as the next top IP, and this will tell the router where to send the traffic to once it's been encapsulated. So what this means is with the IPv4 compatible tunnel, you can pretty much use any IPv6 address that you like, but instead you need to enforce this next top IP address format when you configure the routing. Okay, so just to give you an example here with the router R1 and the loopback 0 of 172.16.0.1 that we would use to source our tunnel interface, for the router R2 or R3 to get to the IPv6 network behind R1, it needs to have the IP next top set to point to R1 that follows this exact format right here with the colon colon which is representing all zeros and then followed by the R1 IPv4 address. So you'll see more of this once we get through our configuration tasks and hopefully it will become clear to you at that point. So now start with our task number one IPv4 compatible tunnel. We need to configure IPv4 compatible tunnel on R1, 2, and 3 with the tunnel interface sourced from the loopback 0 on the routers. And then we need to configure static routes on these routers to provide reachabilities among their loopback 1, 2, and 3. And we are only allowed to configure one static route per destination router. And then we need to verify reachability amongst the routers and their loopback interfaces, as well as having to review the Wireshark packet capture. Okay, so jumping on to router 1. We're going to start off by configuring interface tunnel, give it a number one, and then we need to source the tunnel from our loopback zero, and then we need to set our tunnel mode with the IPv6 IP, and for the IPv4 compatible tunnel, the command for that is the auto tunnel. And this pretty much also is required to have the tunnel interface configured. As you can see, we don't even need the assigning the IPv6 address to the tunnel. And this is because all that we use is link local address, which is derived from the source interface command that we configure. So if we do show IPv6 interface tunnel 1, you can see right here that the link local address is FE80, which is well-known prefix, and followed by the source IP address of the tunnel in hex, which is AC101, which is equivalent to 172.16.0.1. And for the global unicast address, as you can see, since this is type IPv4 compatible address, it's derived automatically with the well-known format of colon colon 172.16.0.1, just how we discussed it right here on our diagram. And that's the reason why we don't need to assign the IP address to the tunnel. Next, we need to configure a routing for router R1 to get to the loopback interfaces on R2 and R3. And here, just looking at the formats of IP address on these loopback interfaces, for R2, it all begins with 2012, and for R3, it all begins with 2013. So for our static route for IPv6, it's going to be IPv6 route. Pointing to R2 is 2012 slash 62, or we could have just used slash 32 if you like, since it's 16 bits right here and another 16 here. I just want to keep it small, so slash 62, and then pointing out tunnel 1, and we also need to specify the IPv6 address for the next top, 
and for R2 is colon colon 182.16.0.2 and this is that where the IP next top format comes into play. Repeat the same process this time for the subnet behind R3 so it will be 2001.3 with the IP next top of 172.16.0.3 with the two colons in the front. Okay, then we can do debug IPv6 ICMP so we can watch for the packets. Now jumping over to R2, let me kind of rearrange the orders of the tabs, so R3 in the left and then R2 and then R1. Okay, so now on R2, same thing with the tunnel one interface, tunnel source, loop back zero, and then tunnel mode, IPv6 IP, auto tunnel, with IPv4 route, 2001.162 pointing out tunnel 1 with the next top pointing to router 1 and then same thing for router 3 subnet. Okay then debug IPv6 ICMP. Now the last router we need to configure router R3 with the tunnel source loopback 0 tunnel mode IPv6 IP with the auto tunnel and then IPv6 route 2001 1 slash 62 tunnel 1 next stop colon colon 1 say to 16 0 1 and then again pointing to router 2 for their subnet okay, and then debug IPv6 ICMP and now before we go ahead and do our test ping. Let me bring up our Wireshark computer and then launch Wireshark. Start on the interface. Let it sit there for the packet and from R3 we're going to first ping R1. And the IP is 2001 -1 sourcing from loopback1. You can see this already pingable. We also want to ping R2 and that will be loopback1 sourcing from R1 uh, sourcing from loopback1 again you can see that's also pingable and if we jump onto R2 you can see the packet it's coming from 2133 which is R3 loopback1 to 2122 and that's for R2 if you look at the R1 same thing the source is coming from 2133 okay so let's take a look at our packet capture let me stop that Scroll down right here. This is when R3 loopback1 pinging R1 loopback1. If you look at the IPv4 header, you can see the source is 162.16.0.3, which is the tunnel source interface loopback0. And the destination, and this is derived from the next top IP that we configure as part of our static route configuration, and it's become 162.16.0.1. Okay, the actual IPv6 source and destination address remains the same as far as what we specify as part of our ping, and then we have the IPv6 ping request. Same thing pretty much happened on the reply packet, with the packet coming from R1 going towards R3, with the IPv4 on the outside and the IPv6 header on the inside. On R1, it should also be able to ping R2, loopback1, and also pinging R3, loopback1. Okay, and same with R2, if you're trying to ping 2001.11, sourcing from loopback1, you can see that's pingable, as well as the R2 trying to ping R3. Okay, so that should complete our task number one.